Welcome to In the Kitchen with Dinah. Today we're making date pinwheel cookies. Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. Someone's in the kitchen, I know. Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. Gonna taste good, I know. So today I'm gonna show you how to make date pinwheel cookies. They are a favorite cookie of mine, and I know I say that about all the cookies, but this one has special memories. My grandma always had them. Every time we went to visit her, she had them in this round Tupperware container. I swear every time we go see her, she had them, and it probably was. But I know my aunt loves them, my mom and dad like them a lot, and I don't make them very often. I really only make them at Christmas time. They're a little on the extra steps, but they are so delicious and so worth the payoff. If you like a Fig Newton, you'll love these date pinwheel cookies. They're very similar. Um, they just take a few steps. They're not hard, but I'm going to show you how to do it today. So I went to the store and got some dates, and these are just out of the bulk section at my local Winco, and they should be pitted. Um, Costco really had a beautiful tub of um, dates as well. So we are going to measure eight ounces of dates. I've got my scale here just because I didn't know how many I was going to need. So there's three ounces. There's some more. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut up these dates and make them like into a jam. Okay, well, we're gonna call that good. So I've got some extra dates left, and let me tell you the yummiest thing I figured out is I break it open, or slice it open. I think this is sliced when they took the pit out. And stuff goat cheese in there and then put a pecan on top. It's so delicious, it's such a great snack. So we have our eight ounces of dates here. Just get a small saucepan and we're just gonna chunk these up into small pieces because we're going to make a jam out of it. Just don't get your fingers because they're a little sticky and they're kind of tough. Oh, I'm trying out my new knife. It's pretty dope. I'm glad you like it. Although it's sharp. I mean, it's sharp on the top where I have my hand, not on the, I've, of course it's sharp on the bottom. Mm, so yummy. I don't know why some dates are tougher than others. Who knows? All right, so we've got our eight ounces of chopped up dates. They're all seeded and everything else. We want two teaspoons of lemon juice, a quarter cup of sugar, and a cup of water. Now we're gonna put this on the stove and let it simmer for 10 minutes. I'm gonna stir it occasionally um, and we're gonna, it's gonna turn into this thick jammy consistency. So I'm gonna turn this on medium low heat and I'm gonna keep checking this because we're gonna make our dough next and you just wanna let it to, you're gonna bring it to a boil and then let it simmer for about 10 minutes. So let's go make our dough. What we need, is I have a cup of softened butter and I kind of melted it a little too long, but it's okay because we're gonna put the dough in the fridge. So I have one cup of butter and we're gonna add two cups of brown sugar. And this is a half cup. Whoa, I just made a mess. So there's a half. There's one. Half. And two. Hey, I hear my dates simmering, so I'm gonna stir them quick. All right, so I'm gonna mix the butter and brown sugar together here quick. Then we're gonna add two eggs. The, this brown sugar dough with the dates is just delicious. Like I said again, if you like Fig Newtons, you'll like these. All right, so let's add two eggs. Give it a whirl. All right, now we're gonna add all our dry ingredients. So I have one half teaspoon of baking powder. A half 
a teaspoon of salt. Oh, well, that's a bummer. Let me grab a clean one. Such a bummer. Okay, where was I at? Half a teaspoon of salt. So I got a teaspoon out because that's what I could reach. I hear my dates again. I just keep, okay, so they are simmering. Okay, I'm gonna turn them down a skosh and set my timer for 10 minutes. Okay. And then we need some baking, some soda, and we need a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. We also need three and a half cups of flour. All right, so we've got all of our dry ingredients in here. Our dates are simmering away on the stove. We're gonna mix our dry ingredients up. This brown sugar dough is so good. I usually fling stuff everywhere. All right, so grab a spatula. Make sure you got it all mixed up really well. You can see how sticky that dough is. That's where we're gonna wrap it in plastic wrap and we'll stick it in the fridge because we're gonna roll these out like a cinnamon roll, put the date filling in and then roll it up and slice them. So it's kind of a two step, two day cookie. So I am going to get my Costco stretch tight out. I'm gonna divide this into three lumps of dough. So. Or you could divide it in half too. I think that looks about right. And I just roll it up. And we're gonna set these in the fridge for a couple hours. And I don't measure very even, so this one is gonna be the big one. All right, so I am going to throw these in the fridge and then we've got about six minutes left on our date mixture and then we're gonna let that cool. So I'm gonna go toss these in the fridge. You're gonna wanna refrigerate these a couple hours um, so that you can work with the dough. All right, so there's our 10 minutes. As you can see, it is nice and thick and jammy and it looks, well, it looks like jam. So I'm just gonna remove this from the heat and let it sit there and let it cool until your dough is ready. And then I'll be back to show you how to, I'll get all the dough and the filling in those cookies. There you go. Well, welcome back. It's been a little bit of time. All, all of our date pinwheel dough is nice and firm and it's gonna be much easier to work with. So we're gonna take one of the packages and with the teeniest bit of flour, make sure you got your rolling pin out. We're gonna get these together. I'm gonna... All right, so I'm gonna try to keep it in a rectangle and you want about, let me look at my instructions because 12, eight by 12. So eight by 12. I knew it was kind of like a nine by 13, just a little smaller. And if you're dough, I just really try to keep it together. Keep some flour on your rolling pin. I'd say that almost looks like eight by 12. So now, you, didn't you say you were supposed to roll this on parchment? Well, I'm gonna- Because how are you gonna roll it into a log if you can't get it off the deck? Very carefully. I'm gonna try one. If it works, I'm gonna go with it. If it doesn't, I'll scrap it and do it again. The paper, which is give you a mechanical, like, 
Do you want me to try it? I'll try it on the next one. Yeah, I just think it'd make it easier to roll because you have. Well, I can flip it on to a parchment right now. I think you should. Okay. Because do you see what I mean? Like you pull the paper and the paper becomes. Oh um, yeah, see, all right. Follow the instructions. Let me grab a parchment. It did it? Are we? We are. So am I gonna put this down and start over, start no, over? You, you wanna pretend, you wanna, if you wanna pretend that nothing no. happened. This is live. I'm gonna oh, show you how to screw okay. it up and fix it. Okay. All right, so you're definitely gonna want either a piece of, parch, piece of parchment paper or some wax paper. So I'm gonna roll this down and I'm gonna fix the hole. I haven't made these for so many years, I, I kind of forgot. All right. Oh yeah, that's a breeze. Breezy, dreamy. Now you just gotta get it even. I'd say that's probably about right. Should we go with it? This is like, like an eight by 10-ish. We're gonna take about a third of our date mixture in an offset spatula and just smear it around. can go all the way to the edges, except for where you're gonna link your dough up. I think that looks great. Okay, so really gently, I'm gonna lift up on the parchment, to see if I can't start it rolling. And you just wanna go really gentle. If you need to, you can just use the paper and keep rolling. It is very finicky. This is probably why they only are made at Christmas. And I don't make them very often, but man, my grandma, she had them every single time, probably because she knew we liked them. She loved them. She loved them. All, everybody loved them. So just keep rolling. Oopsie, and it's sticky. Rolling, rolling, rolling. My oven's hot. So don't mind my kitchen. I got dinner cooking and all sorts of things going on. Ah, oh, my bench scrapers in the clean dishes. Let's go this way. We are gonna put these back in the fridge overnight for them to get nice and hard. So actually I'm just gonna take this and roll it up this way. I'm gonna set them on a cookie sheet and I'm gonna go on to my next one. It's the hardest part, there we go. This dough does work best chilled though, for sure. All right, so let's lather, rinse, repeat. No wonder they don't make these very often. Oh, don't make these very often. They're a labor of love. They're not hard, they're just a little. This is, this is pretty hard. I mean, this is you hard have to be sure. patient. It's not your whip it out cookies. I mean, it's a two day cookie. It is. But my grandma was an amazing baker. You know, third time's a charm. If I made these all the time, I'd probably be exactly. professional. All right, I have got, where'd my little cookie sheet go? Little cookie sheet, I'm gonna gently put these back on here. Now these are going to refrigerate overnight because you want them pretty solid and then we're gonna slice them and bake them. So I will, I'm gonna wrap these, actually wrap them up good, put them in your fridge and then we'll be back tomorrow and I'll show you how to bake them off and how beautiful and delicious they are. So we'll see you then. Well, welcome back. It's the next day. We've got our date pinwheels. I just went and grabbed them out of the fridge. Um, we got the oven preheating to 350 degrees and I've got my cookie sheets lined with parchment uh, that we're gonna stick all the little pinwheels on. So let's try one of these out. They should be nice and hard. They sound good. Let's see if I can get it out. Hey. These aren't as round as I had hoped, but 
it is what it is. I'm just gonna throw this in the sink. Okay. All right, with a very sharp knife, you're just gonna slice these, and sometimes the end is weird, but I still eat it. So about quarter inch, just go right down. And this is the fast, easy part of the cookie. The rest of the prep is a little labor intensive, but I tell you what, it's gonna pay off. I guess they're a little fatter than quarter inch. All right, now we're just gonna take them and line them up on your cookie sheet. Yeah, and that's okay, that's the one you eat. Yeah, that's the chef's one. That is the chef's one, I think. See, these are smaller. I think when I made them before, I divided the dough in half and went with it, so. Perfect. All right, and we'll just keep doing this, and then we're gonna pop them all in the, fr in the, in the freezer, no, in the oven. And I can say that make sure you use the parchment and or, um, wax paper. So that really made these pretty sweet. I'm gonna turn them this way and just let it go. This is the best part. Boy, I can't cut straight to save my life. All right. That date mixture in the middle makes them a little sticky. That's why it's important to keep these cold. All right, so I've got my ovens preheated to 350. We're gonna throw these in there for 10 to 12 minutes. I usually do 11. This one is gonna be wonky, but I said those are the ones you get to eat. So let's pop these in the oven. All right, they're done. Let's take them out. All right, so now we're gonna just let these cool a little minute. I'm gonna take them off the cookie sheets. This is one of the benefits of using parchment, especially when you're baking for the holidays or any old time, just because it always makes my life so much easier. Instead of trying to scoop them off, you just slide them off. And some of the ones that kind of um, baked together, if you're real gentle, when they're still warm, you can kind of take a sharp metal spatula, kind of cut them through and then they'll be fine. And as soon as I can, boy, I'm gonna eat one of these. They are way too hot. These have cooled just a tiny bit and I'm gonna eat one because I haven't made these for so long. Mm. So good. It's so similar to a fig newt without the crunchy seeds. I think you guys will really like these. I sure hope you try them. And yeah, they're a labor of love, but I really think this one pays off. Um, you can freeze them once they cool, if they last that long. And that's what I do. I'll put them in Ziploc bags and just lay them in the freezer and take them out as we need them. But I sure hope you guys give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and turn the bell on for notifications. I hope you guys are having a great holiday with your family, and I'll see you on the next episode. Remember to talk to that guy, not me. Right. It's a good January cookie, too. It is. Because you're coming off the Christmas high, you have to taper off. This is a good way to taper oh off. Date news. Kinda. Do you date in January? Here you go. Oh, <laughs> and action. Clappers. Clapper. The, the clapper. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Those do look poofy and delicious. Look at them. So pretty. Yum. Gonna taste good, I know.